In the United States of America, there is a debate over the religious nature of the country, as well as the founding of the country, with many arguing that America is a Christian nation. America was not founded as a Muslim nation. So why do you think America is a Christian nation? America was not founded as a Hindu nation. The political philosophy of the founders necessitated a divine foundation. I believe our founding fathers were informed by Judeo-Christian values. Go back to what our founders and our founding documents meant. They're quite clear that um, we would uh, uh, create law based on the God of the Bible and the Ten Commandments. It's, it's pretty simple. While they understood the value of a secular government, they feared a secular society. What they thought was right and wrong came from the Ten Commandments, which which is Judeo-Christian philosophy. So that is beyond a reasonable doubt. America was founded as a Christian nation. If you were to search for signs that the United States is a Christian nation, you'd find plenty. When the president-elect is inaugurated, or when Curly swears to tell the truth, oh, truth, and not to put the truth, they swear on a Bible. The Ten Commandments can be found in many courthouses. A verse of the Pledge of Allegiance reads, One nation under God, and the country's national motto is, In God We Trust, a phrase which can also be found on American currency. All of this is to be expected if America is a Christian nation, but what does this actually mean? mean. There are three primary versions of this argument. One is that America is legally a Christian nation. Another is that America is culturally a Christian nation. And the third version is that Christian values influenced the founding of the nation. In order to examine each of these arguments, rather than observing the country as it is now, let's examine the country as it was when it was founded. And that brings us back to 1776. July the 4th, 1776, for this was the day that 13 British colonies made a declaration of independence from Great Britain. This during the Revolutionary War, which began in 1775 and lasted until 1783. Now, regarding the Declaration of Independence, let's begin by conducting a simple word search. How many times does the term Christian appear in this document? <coughs> Jesus, <coughs> Bible, <coughs> religion, <coughs> God the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. How about creator? All men are created equal, they are endowed by their creator. And the term providence appears near the end of the declaration as well. Each of these terms imply Christianity, they do directly reference a deity, but they do not directly reference Christianity, nor do they reference any particular religion. At this point, an argument could be made that the Founding Fathers practiced Christianity, and this is a point at which the debate often gets stuck. When arguing over how the United States of America was founded, it would seem perfectly reasonable to quote the Founders. But the Founding Fathers were independently minded individuals, many of whom were complicated characters who argued with one another and conceived their new nation in spite of their many differences. So while each one was entitled to their own opinions, those opinions are ripe for the cherry picking. They do not categorically confirm nor debunk the Christian nature of the country. Just listen to some of the testimonies of our founding fathers. Often, when the founding fathers are quoted, the argument being made is that America ought to be a Christian nation, which is not necessarily the same as arguing that America is a Christian nation, even if that is implied. If there's one thing that these quotes do accomplish, however, they support the argument that America had a Christian culture when it was founded. Indeed, a majority of American citizens, both then and ever after, have practiced some variation of Christianity. So that would support the second version of this argument. To address the first and third versions, the Declaration of Independence won't get us very far. This document, instrumental to the Revolutionary War, was not intended to govern by. And after the revolution had ended, it had served its purpose. Now came the time to meet the challenge of framing a new government. And in doing so, the Founding Fathers ratified the Articles of Confederation in 1781, which didn't give enough power to the federal government and failed as a result. But hey, you can't always get it right the first time. Upon recognizing that this initial attempt was unsuccessful, the Founding Fathers gathered in Philadelphia for a constitutional convention to debate and create the United States Constitution, the supreme law of the land to this day. 
Once again, we'll begin by searching for keywords. Christianity, Christian, Jesus, Bible, God, Creator, Religion, Religious. Article 6. The senators and representatives before mentioned, and the members of the several state legislatures, and all executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution. But no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. Let's examine now the Bill of Rights for any of the terms we've already searched for. <coughs> Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Perhaps the most notable rephrasing of this text occurred during the Jefferson administration when a group of Baptists from Danbury, Connecticut wrote to the president worried that their state government would be unfair to them as a religious minority. To reassure them, Jefferson replied by emphasizing that there was a wall of separation between church and state. With a constitution-bearing phrases such as no religious test and make no law respecting an establishment of religion, the argument that the United States is legally Christian seems unreasonable. Yet, the argument that the United States is culturally Christian is reasonable. That leaves us with the third version of this argument, that Christianity, the moral and philosophical teachings of Christianity, are reflected in the Constitution. This argument concedes that the government is secular, but maintains that Christianity informed or influenced the drafting of the Constitution. If this is the basis for America being a Christian nation, let's grant it for the sake of argument and ask the following questions. What is the significance of this point of view? Does it matter if the First Amendment undermines the First Commandment? Does it matter if the Second Amendment undermines the Sermon on the Mount? How much of the Constitution was influenced by Christian principles, and is that a substantial amount? While you could say that the Founding Fathers were partly inspired by Judea Christian values, you could also say that they were partly informed by the values of the Enlightenment. To that end, you could and should get away with claiming that America is also an enlightened nation. But that might send mixed messages given that many Enlightenment values were famously divergent from Judeo-Christian values. If it's fair to say that America is a fill-in-the-blank nation with anything that influenced the founding, then this statement isn't false, it's just not entirely true. It's relatively true. Stating that America is a Christian nation would be very similar to saying that the White House is a Greek building because of the influence of Greek architecture. Or perhaps you might describe West Side Story as a Shakespearean musical because of the inspiration drawn from Romeo and Juliet. These assessments are not incorrect, they're just incomplete. They describe some of the subject, but they don't describe the subject definitively. In light of America's founding being partly influenced by Christianity, it's possible that all of these modern tokens of American Christianity are rooted in the nation's founding. Does the Constitution require that the president-elect swear an oath to God during the inauguration? Article 2, Clause 8 of the Constitution reads, The president-elect shall take an oath or affirmation. You don't need to swear, you may affirm. And you'll also notice that the phrase, So help me God, is not included here. The Constitution does not require require this phrase, nor a Bible, when taking an oath of office. The Ten Commandments are not legally permitted to be on display in courthouses, or on any government property for that matter. They can and have been removed on constitutional grounds. The Pledge of Allegiance originally did not read One Nation Under God. That was added in 1954. In God We Trust replaced the original national motto, E Pluribus Unum, in 1956, and in 1957 the phrase first appeared appeared on paper money. Inconsequently, all of this took place during the Cold War, when the United States positioned itself against the spread of quote-unquote godless communism. So these are the three versions of this argument. One is correct, one is incorrect, and the other is partially correct. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Huh? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Are you trying to give me the double talk? <laughs>